Good morning to all of you. Uh, I'm Yasin Hagaidosh Klusuric, and um, I will briefly present uh, the topic that is a part of Green Skill uh, section uh, in the unit sustainability. And um, we are dealing with uh, greener food intake in this topic. And this is the part of the activities of the team from the Faculty of Food Technology and Biotechnology of the University of Zagreb in the uh, IQ Vegan project. So uh, what means greener? Is it also sustainable? So uh, to discuss this, we have to discuss with our students uh, something that is related with water, energy, and the food production. And uh, related to this, uh, we use the life cycle assessment uh, based on the minimization of energy, water use, and we would like to discuss the waste reduction. To be able to do this, we have to relate this with the CO2 footprint, the carbon footprint, water footprint, and a waste in general from farm to fork. So to be able to know where to minimize energy and water use, we need to know a lot of about conventional food processing, as well about advanced processes that are uh, trying already to minimize uh, the energy uh, consumption. And followed by that, we have also the European Green Deal. Uh, the European Green Deal provides uh, an action plan that uh, should help us efficiently use uh, resources and moving to clean circular economy and to restore biodiversity and cut the pollution. So knowing this, we start in the field, defining what are the critical points, defining the targets, and uh, see the projections. So the main plan to that should be achieved to uh, till to, uh, 2030 is to reduce the chemical pesticide in the agricultural sector. Uh, also reduce the nutri nutrient loss. Uh, reduce sales of uh, antimicrobial for farmed animals and to increase land that is uh, used for organic farming, as well to increase the organic aquaculture. Now comes the production. After the field, we have the production, and in this section, we uh, see that the uh, maintaining a sustainable food production chain uh, is really important to food producers. Uh, it's more important than even before because the food industry uh, diversifies its market based on uh, generated value and focusing on the consumer, uh, driving uh, new food products to achieve healthier, uh, healthier food, uh, more nutrients in it and uh, be gentle to the environment. And here we see also the sustainable food cycle and what is so important in it. Uh, then we have mentioned the life cycle. We have the life cycle assessment that is defined as the systematic analysis of the potential uh, environmental impacts of products of services during the entire cycle. But the life cycle impact assessment covers all relevant inputs from environment where we uh, include uh, water use, land use, as well as the emission uh, resulting from the production into the air, water, soil. And here we can also see the carbon and dioxide uh, footprint. Why is this so important for the uh, food industry? Because one third of the global greenhouse gas emission comes from the food system. And 71% is uh, 
produced by agricultural production and the land, land use. So, uh, food processing, transport, packaging, retailing is uh, around 11%, but here we see us, the consumers, that uh, will be um, in, in this share with 2.5%. But we are also participant, uh, participating in the end of life in the waste. So uh, can we do something as a consumer? Yes, we can. And this is something that we would like to share with our students. Some of them, you have seen that we have four different educational levels will not know what is the carbon cycle. So we will start with the carbon cycle to uh, prepare them how to discuss and what to discuss about the carbon footprint. So uh, carbon cycle uh, is not only uh, related to carbon dioxide. We have also some other greenhouse gases and uh, methane, nitrous oxide, are also very important and the emission of them is very important and is expressed as a kilogram of carbon dioxide equivalent because the share of carbon dioxide is the highest and the problem is that we have uh, greenhouse gases that reach the atmosphere and they cannot, uh, they are not able to be uh, absorbed. And this energy will come back to the surface, increasing the temperature and uh, knowing the fact that carbon dioxide uh, will stay in the atmosphere for about 1000 year, uh, that um, we have um, methane that is around a decade decade uh, in the atmosphere, we see that something needs to be done. And being an uh, aware consumer gives us the opportunity to go green. Now we came uh, to the food and we can see here that uh, we are starting from uh, the right with food that is plant-based and uh, the uh, emission of CO2 equivalent will raise with uh, the products that are of animal origin. So these foods are also a um, significant source of proteins. So let's see and compare protein rich food. Here on the bottom, we have nuts with uh, some certain uh, average point that is uh, here, the white point. This is the average, but we have for each food also a range, a wide range. I will explain what does it mean. So to produce 100 grams uh, protein from nuts will emit minus 0 0.8 kilogram of CO2 equivalent on average. And the negative is due to the fact that uh, nuts grow on a tree and the tree will be very helpful in reduction of CO2 uh, in the nature. But if we see the top of this chart, we see a wide range with the average for beef of 25 kilograms of CO2 equivalent, but uh, it's, the range starts at nine till 105. Why is the range so wide? If we consume locally, then the CO2 equivalent, the emission will be much lower. And it increases with uh, the transportation and uh, production. So we have mentioned beside CO2, also the water footprint. Uh, in sustainability, rational water use is certainly a key component, and we have to observe the water-food environment nexus. And here 
is mentioned virtual water and we have direct water. Virtual water is uh, defined as something that is in the product and we are not seeing it and uh, it comes to the end user, but we uh, it's uh, incorporated in the product or service and uh, it is consisted of a production of good electricity, manufactured product, food, crops and transportation. And we see this on um, the, this chart here. If it translated to our live, then we see the direct water. This is the blue drop and the green is the virtual water. And what we see here is that um, the meat products that we have consumed in our lunch or in the dinner will have a really high uh, water use. And uh, compared to uh, plant-based food as veggies here uh, and fruits uh, in the breakfast and in our dinner, we see that our footprint can be uh, lower if we skip one, uh, one meal uh, and change it instead of meat, eat something uh, plant-based. So uh, regardless of the form where we compare the water use, uh, is it a qualitative uh, model as on the right uh, left side or uh, in, in a form of numbers as we have it on the right side? We see again that uh, rich protein food, animal uh, food origin has a high water consumption, but sometimes we can see also in the same group here we have production of rice and uh, wheat that could be compared and we see that uh, we need 68 times more water if we produce the same amount of rice uh, compared to lettuce. So the third point that was mentioned on the beginning uh, beside energy water was waste. So uh, this is a very important uh, issue, but here has to be discussed the food loss that will appear in the food production and the food waste. The food law, uh, uh, the food loss uh, is uh, something that happens before food has reached the consumer. It includes the crops left in the field, foods that is spoiled uh, in the storage or transportation. And on the other uh, side, we have food waste. The uh, food waste will uh, be each waste that was food and it was not consumed. Even if we uh, have a leftover of uh, milk and we give it to our cat, uh, this it is then food waste. So everything what is not consumed is food waste. So this is unfortunately the reality in most countries. And uh, we see in, in this circle who can reduce uh, this waste starting from the farm. It can be reduced even in the transportation, in the production. Retailers can also be uh, a crucial factor. And here are we, the final consumers. So there are a lot of benefits if we have less uh, food waste. And uh, I will just uh, remind you that we have seen that as a consumer, we are causing about 2.5 greenhouse gas pollution. So maybe it seems that this is not a huge number, but uh, if uh, we do something, these numbers can be even lower. And how can we measure how efficient we, we have been related to energy uh, and water use minimization 
or uh, minimization of waste. So one of such indicator is the footprint. And um, it uh, is showing our success. How we will see it here. Here uh, is just an um, example of climate, climate change food calculator related to food. And just a reminder, we have seen that the range for one same group is wide depending of uh, the, the local consumption or uh, distributing it from far away. So here is an example given if we would consume one slice per serving of bread twice a day. I suppose I could eat bread in the morning and in the evening. And here is the example. So per year, it would uh, contribute to production of 43 kilograms of my greenhouse emission. And here I can compare uh, what is this equivalent of driving uh, a car uh, or uh, heating uh, a home. But if I was scared to see these numbers and uh, decide not to eat bread, uh, I can compare it in the group of starches and then I see, okay, it's good. If I eat bread, it's much better than eating rice twice a day, each day in a year. So uh, on the higher educational levels, we would like uh, the students to be able to uh, find the strategy how and where to minimize uh, the environmental impact. And uh, we have suggested use of softwares and what can be discussed in, uh, as the result. So we have the ability to see the impact by life cycle stages and see the impact by the ingredients. So, when we uh, discuss the life cycle stages, we see that agricultural uh, part and uh, production will have a very high impact. And uh, I didn't mention we are here discussing a sandwich. So one sand uh, a sandwich will result with these numbers. And the most uh, worrying ingredient is here the meat. Uh, meat component, but it is followed by other steps. So this here is uh, the production, the additives, flavor, uh, addition, and so on. So uh, here we have the ability to discuss with the students where we can do something. Can we choose maybe some meat analogs and put it here to decrease the impact of ingredients. So this is one possibility. And then we are coming back to uh, same products. And please uh, take a look here uh, under B. You can see uh, milk and milk substitute often used and you see the gas, green, uh, greenhouse gas emission that is much lower for uh, the milk substitute. And we see that the land use is uh, even less, as well as other footprints. And we can compare a lot of examples here, but let's go to the last one under um, the servings where uh, are offered chocolate and coffee that we could consume in a, in a short break uh, during our uh, work. And now we see that the chocolate, even uh, something healthy as dark chocolate, will have much higher uh, uh, gas emission and uh, needs more land use and has uh, higher footprints than a cup of coffee. So these are the comparisons that uh, will give the students the opportunity to discuss. 
what can be done. And here, uh, the footprint calculator will uh, be used to compare uh, different cultivation for the same product. It will be presented on the tomato as, as the veggie produced. Then we will compare different types of oil and emission that uh, is during their preparation and cheese that is produced uh, on the same uh, place, but will be distributed in different distances. So here is the example for, uh, for tomato, and we see here the organic, uh, organic uh, grown tomatoes that will emit 0.24 uh kilograms of co2 equivalent and this value is higher than if we have a classical way of tomato production so here we see that uh, the transportation emission is the same but the production emission is higher and we have to be aware that here is also included the total land use for such production. Now we have an example related to oils. Palm oil, sunflower oil and canola oil is compared. And what can we see? We can see that palm oil well uh, have final emission of 0.5 CO2 equivalent. Sunflower oil will have uh, some higher numbers and canola oil has the highest number. So here we see that uh, the production process ranged from 0.4 to 0.77 and this is something that should be taken uh, in account. And now we know that the transportation had the same emission, but where we can reduce something is the production part. And now cheese, cottage cheese that uh, was consumed locally has produced 0 0.13 uh, uh, CO2 uh, kilograms of CO2 uh, equivalent, followed by some higher uh, transport emission if the distance is uh, uh, increasing. And for long distance, we see that the second column increased. The transport emission is 17 times higher than on the beginning. So again, an argument to consume locally. And we are coming now to the fork. We have started in the farm and here what appeared on our uh, plate will be an measured with uh, the carbon footprint. You can see it here on this web page. So here we have 19 different uh, offers for breakfast. And we suppose that something with meat will have a higher footprint and you have been uh, thinking uh, very good. But surprisingly, we have cereals with banana that also has a really high CO2 equivalent. So what happened? What will have the lowest impact he here? Maybe something with uh, veggies again, or a fruits? No, it will be toast with spread. It's not important, is it jam or is it butter? But uh, cereal with banana had a, a high uh, CO2 footprint because banana is tropical fruit coming from a land not in the neighborhood and this has increased the CO2 level. So let's combine something for uh, our lunch, starting with a soup. And here we have different soups and we already know that something with meat will have higher uh, values and you have been correct. But uh, 
I thought that maybe uh, the vegetarian chili will be the lowest, but it was not the case. The bean or lentil soup will be the best choice if we consider uh, to choosing a soup with a low carbon footprint. It's 23 times uh, less emission than if we consume uh, beef chili. Now we are coming to the uh, main dish and we have some side dishes as uh, mashed potato and here uh, in the last row we see what is offered and I thought it could be very nice to offer something with meat or with fish and here we have also some uh, plant-based main uh, component and of course Meat will have the highest CO2 footprint, but followed by the fish. Why this fish? Because it's coming far away, from far away. And then something from plants, plant-based, has almost the same uh, footprint as fish that was uh, immediately frozen when it was catched or fresh regional uh, fish. And our um, side dishes have the more or less uh, equal emission, but only seasonal uh, veggies had uh, emission that was lower than 100 grams of CO2 per, uh, per of CO2 equivalent. And finally, we are coming to the dessert. And this chocolate seems suspicious when we have observed the sustainability and when we have compared it with coffee. So maybe the milk chocolate will have the highest value. And it is not the case. So we see that seasonal fruit will have the lowest uh, CO2 footprint and compared to the tropical foods and uh, fruits that came from far away countries, uh, we see that we can do something if we eat uh, locally. So uh, something similar has uh, shown Rui, but this is uh, just a comparison of uh, how many water will be used uh, regarding the foods that we have eaten. And again, you see that uh, plant-based food will have uh, a lower water for footprint as well. So is it possible uh, to have a greener food intake that is more sustainable? Yes, it is. Uh, is it necessary to be uh, a vegetarian? No, you have seen uh, on Rui's slide that um, flexitarians try to uh, reduce the intake of meat but we can do something else. If we eat locally, seasonally, it will decrease the CO2 footprint. If we eat uh, some analogs, it will decrease the food imprint. Just a reminder on milk and milk substitute. If we avoid unnecessary packaging, we will produce less food. If we plan in ahead, we will eat um, high nutrient food and uh, have less uh, waste as well. And uh, something that we could do at home if we do not have a garden, we can have uh, maybe uh, spices in a pot. So uh, my final note uh, is that if it's not easy to start eating greener, but if you will decide to uh, try it, uh, I hope that this uh, short overview will make your first steps easier. And uh, hereby, I would like to thank you for your attention.